Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us for another community update this evening. I know we had one last week, but we do have some more information for you with respect to notification and then also some um, testing information for you. So as you know, the governor um, had this idea of getting tests out to all of our students before they came back from the holiday. And most districts across the state did not receive their tests. We were one of those, but we do have them now and um, you're gonna hear about how they will be distributed. I also wanted to let you know that last night I was checking out our case rates in our area. And although we do have high um, case rates in this surge, we, in the last 14 days, were one of the lower areas in our city um, with our case rates. So something positive, um, I'm wishing you all well, and I want to kind of dig into the information. So Dr. Canal, can you go ahead and um, lead us through the rest of the slides? Thank you, Dr. Carmen Dame. And the next slide is, which should look very, sim uh, very familiar to you. We did cover this slide previously last week and where we spoke about how the California Department of Public Health recently amended its guidance on isolation protocols to be more closely aligned with the CDC recommendations. As a reminder, the isolation guidance applies to any individual who has tested positive for COVID-19. A change in the recommendation is the length of isolation period. Previous guidance recommended 10 days of isolation, but after the CDC's recent amendment to those guidelines, the California Department of Public Health now states that a person, regardless of vaccination status, can in isolation after five days if they are symptom-free or their symptoms are resolving and they have a negative COVID test. If a person is unable to test, isolation can end after day 10 if the symptoms are not present or it's resolving. So this is very similar information from last week, nothing's changed. In the next slide, you'll notice is where we have the biggest change and adaptation from the last guidance from last week. On the left side, you'll see for students exposed at school, the new guidance dated on January 12th in the evening is regarding close contacts in K-12 school settings. Notifications will be provided to the entire group considered exposed, whether it's a classroom, a school athletic team, including those who are vaccinated and are recently infected. Important to note, exposed students should be tested three to five days after exposure. However, and this is key, exposed students may continue to participate in the school or extracurricular activities, including sports, unless testing positive or symptoms develop. And that is very key and quite different. You'll notice an asterisk, unvaccinated students exposed away from school must undergo quarantine of 10 days at home unless negative test is received after day five then quarantine to day seven. On the right side, for staff, if they are boosted, mask and monitor for symptoms and recommend testing. Unboosted, mask and monitor, test three to five days after last exposures, and if symptoms do occur, then we're asking staff to isolate and test. So this is significant, again, a change from last week um, from those that, uh, the recommendations that were pro provided beforehand. On the third slide, You'll uh, notice that we continue to have the same slide where it's a recommendation of masking for indoors. We wanna make sure that everyone masks indoors. The most effective masks are outlined on this slide. Um, these slides, uh, excuse me, these uh, masks, and just note, for example, the, minute, the fitted surgical masks are, are being provided for staff and at the school site. If someone needs an additional mask, uh, they can always re uh, request it. We do have those uh, on hand as we have had them on hand. So we continue to ask people to continue to wear their mask. Um, and do not come to school if they feel sick or ill or have developed any of the symptoms. So those uh, mass recommendations are the same from uh, last week. On our next slide, we shift to testing kits. Uh, as mentioned by Dr. Common Day, uh, other, uh, most districts in our area um, uh, did not receive the testing kits as other areas. So you may have had some districts where they had the kits and now some folks were wondering about when we were going to be distributing ours. The county recently provided those test kits uh, to us. The district is currently in the process of distributing the student COVID-19 test kits to all of ours to be delivered as soon as possible. Each school site will share their own individual distribution procedures for the student COVID test 19 kits with their school community in the very near future. So please stay tuned for communication from your school site where they will articulate not only when, but also the date and the time 
uh, for you to, to facilitate that uh, the distribution of testing kits. In addition to those testing kits that will be distributed at school sites, the next slide, uh, most of you have seen this in the news, where there are free testing kits provided by through covidtest.gov. Every home in the U.S. is eligible to order four free at-home COVID-19 tests. The tests are completely free. Orders usually ship in about seven to 10 days. There's a picture of the website there. Some of you may have received an email or a link from the U.S. Postal Service. It is the same link. Once you click on the link that you see here on the screen in the image, it takes you to the same USPS website. So please take advantage of those kits that are available to you uh, for your home. And now uh, back to Dr. Carmen Day. Thank you so much for that important information. Uh, I just wanna make mention that if you are seeing any unusual behavior in your um, students or children or um, staff, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out if there is an emotional um, support needed. We always will have access to our crisis line, Care Solace. We have our virtual wellness center that has a lot of strategies for any kind of mental health issues that um, you may be um, visibly seeing. So please um, do not hesitate to reach out. As I say, every meeting, this is always going to be a topic for me. So. Um, we want to make sure that everyone is um, taken care of or that seeking the help that they may need. And then just to wrap it up, just as a quick reminder, you can always access our information on our website. Um, remember last week I mentioned that our website is going to be shifting and I thank you in advance for any patience for any glitches. So I just remind you um, we'll be making that shift as well. Uh, we were having a celebration this week for uh, Valencia National Blue Ribbon, but that has been postponed until our case rates in the area go down. And then walk, you're always welcome to join us at any of our board meetings and our next one's January 25th. So thank you again for joining us. Uh, thank you for understanding the constant uh, flux and change in some of our guidance and how we're adjusting as swiftly as possible. And thanks for sharing your students um, with us, we really appreciate it. Um, and we're doing our best to take great care of them. Take care.